Greg Murphy, host of the Barbecue Central Radio Show. And you are listening to BCRN, all barbecue and grilling all the time. From my heart and from my hand, why don't people understand my intention? Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Fine, how's it going? <laughs> you have a great show, I'm a big fan. So what 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 seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead and he's in the in the crackle. Charbono! It's all about the Charbono, dude! Succulent fish! What? He ate 54 wieners. Oh, listen, Laverne, it's shake face. I'm shaking like a dog shit peach seeds. <laughs> You could use it to fight off creeping marauders looking to take your steaks off your grills. I just like being anywhere with Junior, Senior, and Diva. Sounds like a whole lot of the movie. Wow. Yeah, really. Keep it hot, keep it clean, keep it lubricated. We have top men working on it right now. Ooh, top men. And right at the two aftermark, top men taking control of the Barbecue Central Radio Show. And we are segueing over the After Dark segment. I'm your host, Greg Rempe, 877-448-0433. Greg at thebbqcentralshow.com is the email address. Candy Weaver is set to join me here in about three or four minutes from now. She is the new president of the KCBS. She was on the board last year. I single-handedly got her enough votes to get in. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, I don't know exactly, uh, oh, every damn week, you think, you'd think that maybe I would remember to get that off of the queue, but no, no, no. Anyway, uh, well, see, now I've completely lost my train of thought. I don't know exactly, like, how the whole BOD works, and I'll, I'll get some more insight from Candy here in just a few minutes. But, like, once you get elected, like, in, is then there another vote as far as how all of the officers are voted on did she like win in a fist fight to become president did she kick everybody else's ass in order to be presidente i don't know so maybe uh, we'll get some insight on that as well look if you have if you're a member of the kcbf and you have a vested interest and you have some questions to ask her please feel free to go ahead and shoot them over to the email greg at the bbq central show.com you can also leave them here on the instant message chat It would probably be wise at this time for me to actually head on over to the Facebook page and make sure that there aren't any new questions that have have, uh, surfaced. Probably one of the most reacted to posts that I've ever had in recent memory was just letting people know that there was going to be Candy Weaver on the show. It opened up argument. There was ballyhoo about why aren't there KCBS events up in, or at least more KCBS events up in New England that, Nebs is really supporting KCBS, but perhaps there's a feeling that they're getting shafted by the lack of events and, of course, the non-existence of a Sam's Club event up there either. So, well, all great stuff that we're going to be able to talk to Candy Weaver about. Look, I can't let this go. This has nothing to do with barbecue whatsoever, but I was sitting uh, watching television, which I rarely do. I'm very busy putting the show together like all the damn time. Chasing guests, prepping, doing questions, practicing my live reads so I can do them from memory on command, all that great stuff. But here, I'm watching this television, and I forget what the name of the show was, but it's like Fatal Addictions, or I'm an idiot, and these are my addictions. And uh, one, one girl was tanning. She was addicted to tanning. She was tanning three times a day. Uh, Roughly, that's like 60 minutes a day. I think she said she wanted like 20 or 30 times. And it was 60 to 90 minutes a day. Uh, You know, whatever. That's pretty bad in itself. I mean, you're just inviting skin cancer. And I think you know at this point we have the medical knowledge out there. The tanning probably isn't the best thing for you if you're doing it three times a day. Three times a week is a little much. Three times a day is extensive. Also, a word that rhymes with extensive, expensive. And she was in high school. So, look, obviously self-esteem issues there. 
But that wasn't the ridiculous addiction. The ridiculous addiction was the idiot lady that followed her that had a, wait for it, 30-year, that's right, 30-year addiction to eating what? Comet. Uh Uh-oh. That's right. The household powdered cleaner that's underneath your sink, in your bathroom, or in your kitchen. Comet? (laughs) What? Excuse me, where does eating Comet ever cross your mind as being a fabulous idea? Looking at that green can, I mean, I understand. It's romantic. It's got that je ne sais quoi about it, where you look at it and you're like, (laughs) give it a sniff. You're like, man, that smells like it could just incinerate all of my cilia in my nose. So instead of doing that, I'm going to pour some in my hand and put it in my mouth. What? Put it in your mouth? This is household cleaner. It disinfects germs out of the place where you go number two. And you're putting it in your mouth by choice for the past 30 years. And you did it today, too. And you can't stop it. Put anything else in your mouth. Put the thing that you just cleaned the toilet with in your mouth, and it's not going to do anywhere near the damage that putting Comet in your mouth is. What has happened to you where you're turning to Comet to ease the pain? Heroin would be a better idea, I think. Heroin would be a better idea than eating Comet. Chase the dragon. Do eight balls by the boatload. Don't eat Comet. Just don't eat Comet. It's worse as a matter of fact, that the, the dentist, she had to go to the dentist, and you're going to know why here in a second, right? She had to go to the dentist because her teeth are rotting out because the acid and the chemicals and stuff that are in Comet, the household cleaner, are eating away her teeth. She has meth teeth. Meth teeth. Because meth is made out of Comet. Maybe she just couldn't afford the crack, and she's just circumvented the whole crack-making process and just went straight to the comet, straight to the source. She, it's like pure heroin. She's not cutting it with baby laxative. She's just eating the freaking comet. I don't know. I don't know. But look, she's had to get all of her teeth removed because she's eaten the comet. What's, what have we learned here for the past three or four minutes? That when I decide to watch television, I should just not watch television from now on? Well, yes. You're probably right. But more importantly, friends and neighbors, here is the theme for the night. No matter how good of an idea it sounds like, we don't ever, we don't ever, under any circumstances, start a meth-eating addiction no matter how good of an idea it sounds like. I'm sorry. It's just never, ever, never, ever going to be a great idea to eat Comet. So you're welcome. Mission accomplished. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, race back over to the hotline, bring up new president of the Kansas City Barbecue Society, and more importantly than that, friend of the show, Candy Weaver. Candy, how are you? Dude, how can I follow that comedy eating thing? I, I, I was just going to tell you, when was the last time you ate some comedy? <laughs> I'm hoping never. never. Okay, good. I, I didn't know if, like, Comet and a good hickory wood pellet was a good mix, and that's something that you can actually <laughs> no, get away with. Do you put a little Jack Daniels between the cheek and the gum. You know? Oh, my goodness. I'm telling you, it's, uh, I, I was, it's just utter amazement that I'm sitting there watching a lady putting Comet in her mouth, and it's something she'd been doing for 30 years. Have you ever heard of something more absurd? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's all you can say, no. So, anyway, we're talking with Candy Weaver. You would know her, of course, from her wild success in the wood pellet industry, uh, Barbecuers Delight, bbqrsdelight.com happens to be her website, and uh, just recently elected a KCBS president, and last year, obviously, you were on the board. So, Candy, I was just kind of wondering out loud as we were leading into the open of the second hour, uh, last year you were elected to the BOD, how are officer positions actually uh, elected? How does that go down? Um, the board meeting in February, uh, you, they, they really put, bring the new board members in in the first order of businesses. Carolyn, actually, the executive director, conducts the meeting, and the first order of businesses is the selection and the election of officers. 
and uh, all 12 board members kind of sit around, and those who win, win. And those who don't, pound salt. Yeah, pretty much. So uh, who, who was voting exactly? Uh, the 12 members of the board, the current board. Okay, and so then the 12 members of the current board are not obviously going to be then on, on this board, or do they have opportunity to continue on? Um, well, you know, a, uh, a KCBS member can serve on the board. You're elected for a three-year term. You can uh, serve for two terms, and then you've got to lay out a year, mm-hmm. and then you can come back and serve more if you care to. All right, so Mike Lake was on his uh, the end of his second term then? Uh, Mike Lake was reelected for his second term the year I, last year when I got elected. All right, so he wasn't due up for president. Uh, in, no, he, he, his last year, you can be you can be an officer for three years running right. at a certain officer. I think if, if Mike had wanted to run for vice president or for treasurer or for secretary, he could have if he had chosen to. Now, but he couldn't be president again. Do you, do you ask to be nominated for president, or do they just take everybody and, and uh, decide who they want to put where? Well, I asked. I, I, I put myself in the, run, in the race. So you said, I, I want to run for president? Yeah. All right, so obviously enough people I mean, want I you. self-nominated because basically I didn't want anybody to think that, that, that I, I needed support from anybody else. I had ideas. I put my, my name out there. I said, hey, I'll run for president. All right, so obviously enough people liked what you had going on where they uh, got you into the presidency. Uh, something that is daunting to you to any degree? Do you just see it as a challenge that you're ready to tackle? What do you think? I'm ready to tackle it. It is daunting. I'll, I'll tell you that. It's, uh, there, there are, uh, it's an interesting collection of people on the board of directors. It's all, all very strong-minded people that have one thing in common, and that's a, a love for barbecue and a love for the Kansas City Barbecue Society. So, but we all have different ways of, of, of wanting to see that of wanting to share the love, you know, it's all different. So it's, uh, I, I, I ran with a, with a, uh, a mind and an idea on how to, uh, work more cohesively as a unit. So we'll see if I can, if I can pull it off. Candy Weaver joining us, new president of the Kansas city barbecue society. Uh, Candy, obviously you had been cooking for a number of years competitively. You're obviously very successful with the wood pellet portion of the barbecue industry. And I guess it's either one or two ways when you're looking to actually up the ante and get self-involved in the sanctioning body that you have been taking part in for any number of years. One is that you see issues that you want to go ahead and try and make changes yourself, or you just like everything that's going on, you want to be a part of it. And obviously because you came on the show a couple years ago to make your bid uh, to get in for the first time, which was last year, you saw some things that you wanted to change. How well do you think that first year on the board, did, did you get anything accomplished that you were hoping to and what do you hope to do during these uh, next 51 weeks or so as uh, KCBS president? Oh, tough question, Greg. Um, honestly, I'm not so sure I accomplished what I thought I was going I didn't know. I'm not so sure I knew what I was getting into last year, to be honest with you. And um, um, I, I remember telling Jeff Stiff that my biggest fear was being the sole new person on the board. And, of course, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> and um, it's, it's been an interesting year. It's definitely affected the quality of my cooking, and uh, hopefully that will change this year. But um, there's a, all boards of directors have a great deal of inertia built into them, and that's both a good thing and a bad thing, and we don't react very quickly. And... Um, that brings a stability to an organization is not a bad thing. So all things considered, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. I guess the question that I have in regards to things that you didn't expect is at least over the past, let's say, two, three years, and probably while, well, it's obviously if you look at the numbers, but there's a, a vocal minority of people saying that, you know, it's the same old BOD, it's the same old problems, it's a good old boy network, there's a lot of infighting where talking about minutia, not looking forward and trying to move the organization as a whole into bigger and better. Hearing about it and reading all that stuff, making the run when you actually got in there, was it almost dead on as far as what the vocal minority was saying, or was it not as bad? Uh, or was it worse? Yes. 
<laughs> it was worse. Well, so I mean, how, how does it? How does that get fixed? Do you think? You know, taking well, taking yourself think, out of out of the position, just you know, talking like two humans here. I mean, how does how do you think that situation gets remedied? Honestly, I think I think more co- cooperation. Trying to get twelve people with distinct personalities in a room that have distinct ideas, and each one with their own uh, agenda. You know, the, the whole thing comes down to, to communication and better communication and more teamwork. So. I'm kind of viewing myself as a bit of a coach, to put it in sports terms. So if you have so, if you have twelve people, are there is it the majority of people just not having like minded ideas and not communicating well, or is everybody so far off on their own corner? There's just no middle ground. Well, there is a middle ground. That's the that's the main thing. Is there is a middle ground, and a love for barbecue, and a love for KCBS, and wanting to see KCBS succeed. You know, there isn't a person on the board that wants bad things for, for the society. And that, that is the common ground. It's, it's just forming a uniform front and realizing that each one of us has different strengths and balances and brings different, uh, different talents to the table. And being able to utilize those talents is, is really um, the whole key to, to making it all work. So as, as you peruse the officers that are going to you know, help serve with you here over the next year, as, as you look down the line and who's serving where and what duties they have as president and you know, kind of a, an overseer, what areas would you like to see fixed? Not necessarily pointing anybody out in particular, but what areas would you like to see fixed, refined, honed, what have you? Uh, I think our top number one goal, and I actually said this at the board meeting, which was yesterday, what needs to be some kind of continuing education training for our judges. Um, we need to work really hard to get uh, judges closer to uh, the same judging style, um, and that's that's a top priority to me. And of course, we have the Sam's Barbecue Series, which uh, everybody wants to be wildly successful. Now, as far as the, as far as the education is concerned. Uh, is that a matter of wh- whoever's in charge of, of educating doing a better job of what they're doing, or does something else need to be implemented? Well, I think something else needs to be implemented. I, I would like to see some kind of online uh, online continuing education training pro- program that maybe maybe breaks into a number of things. I, honestly, I haven't uh, I haven't broken it down to exactly how we're going to make it happen. We have. Uh, a uh, couple of skilled people that, that can, I think, make it happen. That one of the CBJ instructors has a, a, a very detailed uh, 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 PowerPoint presentation that might be the basis of some of it, but you've got to make it entertaining to where people want to do it. And um, we'll, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Now, as far as the Sam's Club series, obviously this is a huge get for KCBS, Sam's a very big company offering a lot of money and having a kind of a unique competition series for, for the people that really perhaps aren't aware of what all the ins and outs are. Can you kind of explain the Sam's Barbecue Series for us and how that's going to unfold over the course of the year? I'm sorry, I was reading the I was reading the chat. Don't I'm, read the I'm chat listening. as a, as host <laughs> of the show. I have to. I, I've learned this a long time ago. If you read the chat, you're going to get lost in the conversation, and then you're going to force me to hang I'm up sorry. on you. That's all right. Uh, the the Sam's Club was obviously a huge get because Sam's is a, is a very big company. They obviously recognize that competition barbecue is growing. So, mm-hmm. for the people that maybe don't have that intimate knowledge of what Sam's the what the Sam series is all about, tell us how it kind of is is breaking down and how it unfolds over the course of the year. Well, it starts uh, in Region 1, which is out in the West, and, um, and it, it's broken down to three, four, and five uh, contests in each of, each of different re- five regions, and culminating with a regional uh, uh, event in each of the regions, and the, the winners at the regional events go to the national event, which, which will be in Bentonville, Arkansas. And it is truly a barbecue tournament. Uh, there's big bucks involved. There was a uh, KCBS member sign up, 
And as of right now, I believe there's seven open uh, team places left in Santa Fe, New Mexico. But all of the rest of the, the contests are all filled up. So, very exciting. Now, some people were saying that they, they didn't feel that some of the areas of the country were getting proper representation, um, more notably up in the Northeast. Was there any rhyme or reason how they were picking uh, sectional areas? Sam picked them, and uh, I know there were some issues with some clubs that, uh, that because of, of, of zoning and restrictions at the individual locations, they could not host an, an activity like this. You know, they're limited as far as what kind of things they can do in their parking lot. Um, um, and even after they did the initial 26, some of them had to be moved to other locations. And uh, and it was a real balancing act. And the folks at the KCBS office did a great job to, to uh, make sure that uh, none of the contest sites and, and dates interfered with any other contest in that immediate area. Um, I, I think it's very well, well, very well planned so far, and um, I, I believe we'll probably have one more open session to fill the last uh, seven slots in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and which is in April. Um, and uh, you know we'll go from there. Candy Weaver joining us, KCBS president. And her uh, business website, BBQRS, BarbecuersDelight.com for wood pellets if you have those uh, pellet-driven cookers. So if you compete in a sectional event, how, how many teams are they taking and, and moving on from uh, event to event? It varies according to region. You know, some of the regions have four, t- four contests, and some of the regions, I think one of them has six. I'm not sure. Um, um, and it'll be, it, it'll be the, the best overall. Um, I think some are going down five or six or seven. So the top top seven, eight, nine, ten teams will go up to regionals. Pretty good odds, yep. actually. Pretty good odds. And so, how many teams are going to be there at the at the final showdown? Um, I suspect about fifty. Fifty teams, and then what's the what would be the the grand prize payout at the end? Think and, and don't hold me to this, but I think it's a, it, the, the total prize pot's about two hundred thousand. I could be wrong though; I don't remember. Wow, two hundred thousand dollars! It's a lot of yeah, money. A lot of money. I mean, uh, I remember when Ronnie Cates was first coming out with hundred thousand dollar events. Uh, you know, two hundred thousand dollars. Assuming that figure is correct, uh, is huge as well. I mean, you've been around competition barbecue for quite a while now, Candy, and you probably remember when purses weren't nearly. Uh, what they are now, just kind of a testament to how popular this is becoming overall across the country? I, I believe so. Uh, in fact, you made me laugh because Ronnie Pace is the reason why I got into cooking, you know. Uh, he's a friend of mine, and, and uh, um, he actually came begging to me and says, Candy, come cook. I need to, I need to make Budweiser happy. And uh, so I went out and cooked the backyard contest, and darn if I didn't win sauce. It was a little bit of sauce for my two favorite bills and a little bit of Jack Daniels to, to sweeten it up. And I was hooked right after that. I, I started started going full bore, went to Dr. Barbecue School and, and, and cooked my mix. I had a big cooker within a month. But uh, it's, uh, barbecue's growing, and, and, and it's, it's one of those things that every backyard Joe thinks, well, I could do that. And you know what? He can. So, of course, it's going to grow. I think the one, one fear I have is I, I see fuel prices going up, and I think that can really put a, uh, put a damper on a lot of traveling teams. Oh, absolutely. I think we ran into that a couple of years ago when fuel mm-hmm. was skyrocketing up to you know $4 plus a gallon, especially for the diesel engines that are out there. And, of course, a lot of the big teams using those motor coaches or they have the big uh, F-250, 350 diesels uh, towing their trailers along. So that's always something to consider, especially now with the cost of oil rising every day, it seems like. Uh, at least here in Cleveland, we're at three ten a gallon, and that's just for regular gas. So uh, it only promises to go up from here. Uh, as you look at that, you know, as as a board, and you see potential fuel prices affecting contests, is is there any apprehension at this point that you might be losing some entries as you look down the road? Not at the present. Um, 
I, I tell you, I was I was talking to somebody today, and I, we sanctioned a pilot contest at the last meeting, and I think this this uh, this next uh, meeting will will sanction a pile more. I mean, I I, I see, uh, and honestly, I think I think a lot of contests are going to end up having to pull more local folks in to be cooks. Candy Weaver joining us here, president of the Kansas City Barbecue Society. Uh, so we were talking about the uh, Sam's Club series. Uh, what else does KCBS have, or what else are they going to be rolling out here to kind of uh, even encourage more people to, to get into KCBS? That will be the job of the membership committee, and, and uh, that's Jingo Kachia, and, and we're working on new things all the time. But I think the, the Sam's Club series in itself uh, – because it really was members only that that really um, gave gave cooks an incentive to join KCBS because you know you don't have to be a member to cook. Oh, absolutely not. Um, you know, I, I wonder, Candy, and you know, you've been around KCBS for quite a while. When uh, Carolyn and Gary founded KCBS, it was just kind of a recreational thing. You've seen it grow over the past twenty plus years, and you know, uh, I've asked this too some more of the, I guess, the prominent competition cooks out there. But do you think that there should be a point where they look to get out of kind of that that mom-and-pop feel and go and and get out of the nonprofit portion and switch it over to to a business? Let's make money and, you know, grow it as much as we can. That's always something to consider, Greg. You know, um, when you get to a certain size, I think you have to consider all your options. So, I guess the answer to that is yes. I mean, do you think that's something that is, is ever going to happen? Or do people want to retain some of that essence initially and, and there's a, a fear to jump over and try and build it out of, kind of build it away from what it was founded on? You know, I hope it doesn't ever get too far away from its roots because really it's, barbecue is about the four S and that's food, friends, family, and fun, and if we start getting away from that, then, then you know, it's just wrong, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I would hope that barbecue never never loses the, the, the fun part, you have... so I, with a lot of money in there, th- things change. Yeah, I mean, I was just going to say, you, I mean, you're having more and more contests show up that are big money contests, that a lot of the people that are really looking to win the the team of the years and of course line the pockets or at least recoup costs because doing competition barbecues you well know very expensive the traveling the meats the entry fees all that other stuff and and associated costs that probably a lot of people don't consider to add in during the course of a weekend uh yeah uh, do you think that there's a point where kcbs might start its own like a super professional series or take you know 15 or 20 of the of the top cooks every year and make its own little series for them as kind of like a, a major league of uh, competitive barbecue. That's a neat idea. Never heard that one before. That's that's that's, a, that's an interesting concept. I mean, Con, uh, concept. I mean, I certainly always understand the, the argument back is well, then that eliminates the little guy or the people that are just out there doing the weekend uh, warrior stuff. But uh, I guess in in the same argument, there's probably not the majority of people out there that are going to be able to pull. 30 plus competitions a week because they have regular jobs, re- you know, regular life, uh, they work, whatever the case may be. Sure. But, uh, well, team of the year is, is not a sprint. It's a marathon. And I don't, I don't know of any, any team. There's, there's a few that have been very lucky that have made the top 10 in team of the year that maybe have only cooked under 20, but, uh, it's possible, but boy, you'd have to be really lucky. One final question here before I uh, let you go, Candy. You, you know, you have down south the Florida Barbecue Association kind of, you know, slowly growing up from the south and growing northwest and east. Uh, there's a new sanctioning body out there in really what has kind of grown into a hotbed of competition, barbecue being Arizona. Uh, now uh, Mike Ryman has founded the Barbecue Championship uh, series for barbecue, kind of their own rules and, and stuff. And then, of course, you have the IBCA and a bunch of different sanctioning bodies. 
Do you think there's ever a point, and we're talking big picture here and probably down the road, but do you ever think that there might be an amalgamation and a joining so there's one governing body of competition barbecue throughout the country? Oh, I don't think so. You know, honestly, I think I think they're all very different. Some are closer than others, but, um, uh, I mean, I've been an IBCA member for, for ages, and I always cook at least one every year and enjoy it. In fact, I'm getting ready to go cook one this weekend. And um, uh, But they're very different, and, and that's not different bad. That's different good. So you don't mind having as many barbecue competition sanctioning bodies out there as they'll have? I don't think there's a problem with it. It's like, look at how many chili competition groups there are out there. I, I can think of at least two or three. You know, Texas has Lone Star. They have uh, uh, the Greater Gulf. They have uh, uh, and and IBCA. And you know, in Texas, they just cook for fun. <laughs> of course, uh, Candy Weaver joining us. She's the current president of KCBS. Uh, Candy, before I let you go, uh, of course, got to ask you about Barbecuers Delight. Anything new happening over there? New flavors? Uh, new anything? What's happening over on the business side of stuff? Uh, yeah, we're having to doing some fun stuff. Um, I, I, I had a customer down in Texas that came up to me one time and said, Candy, I've got these, these little squares of wood I can't do anything with. Would you make them into pellets? I want to burn them in my, in my pellet grill. And he sent them up on a truck, and, and uh, we, we ran. And these, these are wine-soaked oak squares. And, you know, but everything's high-tech these days. They don't make barrels for, or put things in barrels and, uh, very often, but they soak these little squares of oak in uh, in these big stainless steel vats of wine to give it that the tannins of the oak and the flavor and all this stuff. And it's in like a tea bag. And we had a truckload of this stuff, and we made it into pellets. And I was so scared that I'd lose the flavor, so we ran it 100%. Well, that stuff was so hard you couldn't run it through a pellet, uh, 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 an auger, at least a solid auger. Now the pellet jambo would eat it because. It's got like a corkscrew auger, and it'll feed anything in there. I think even sawdust, it'll burn it up. But uh, uh, we took that 100% stuff and, and uh, uh, cut it with some plain good straight oak, and it ought to burn in pellet cookers now. And I did a brisket with it a couple weeks ago, and it was fabulous. So I'm going to see if I can't do real good this weekend with some of that pellet. I'm going to go get me a five-gallon bucket of them. Made them today. Wow, man. fresh off the press. Uh, fresh off, and, uh, and uh, we're we're toying with with doing a charcoal pellet. Char- which would be interesting. Charcoal pellet. What I mean, what's the what's the idea behind that? Well, I, I've had a number of people over the years say I'd really like to get a taste of charcoal in my in my on my pellet grill. What would I do? And uh, we're gonna try it out. We're gonna see how it goes. So, that, that seems like it, it's like the complete antithesis of what bar, like wood pellets is all about, going to a charcoal pellet, right? Well, <laughs> you know, uh, try it, you might like it. <laughs> hey, absolutely. I'll be anxious to uh, see how that goes So next time we have you on. Uh, typically, I usually get about one interview with any KCBS board of director, and then all of a sudden they become ghost on me. So I'm, uh, I'm anticipating that you're not going to do the same thing to me. Um, and- no, I, I'll talk to you anytime, Greg. I've told you that before. All right, so I'm going to hold you to that. Oh well, I appreciate that, and uh, I'll hold you to it. And uh, we'll... oh, and I want to I want to answer David Booska's question. Go ahead, because he asked me asked to asked me if I'd run consider running for a second term uh, to support the cooks out there, and I'm hoping not because I'd sure like to to see some cooks run for the board next year, and because there will be three open spots. Uh, on the board uh, that will need to be filled with new people next year. And that will that'll mean that half the board is people that have served on the board less than two years. Wow. So uh, How this, exciting is that? That will change the whole dynamic and, and, and change everything. That could be the new blood that everybody has been talking about for the last year or two. And we're talking with Candy Weaver, current KCBS president, and again her uh, business website, BBQRS, Barbecuers Delight. Dot com. Candy, I appreciate the time, and I look forward to our next chat. Thanks, Greg. Good right. night. Take care. Bye. Madam President, KCBS, Candy Weaver, and, of course, from uh, Barbecuers Delight fame. Uh, Ray, if you ever think you're going to get me in a position 
that you're going to teabag me. Get you're wrong, my friend. You're wrong. As much as you want to, and you put it out there, which is really, I thought Brad was a creeper. Whoa. Just never going to happen. I don't know what else to say. Just never going to happen. But anyway, sorry to ruin your night, but I appreciate you uh, dropping in on that, Ray. Uh, that was Candy Weaver. Of course, the Kansas City Barbecue Society's website is kcbs.us. Uh, next time I have her on, I will, of course, provide ample time ahead of time for you to drop questions in, although it seemed to be uh, more of an argument on the Facebook page this time. So uh, that way I can ask questions uh, right along, and she doesn't have to read through the chat and get lost and not listen to my questions next time. Quite rude, Candy. Quite rude. All right. We're going to wrap this one up. We look back on the first hour. We had Heath Hall. Head on over to uh, bbqbackyard.com. Check out the new social media site for barbecue. It's going to be bigger than Facebook and Twitters. Also, thanks to Rick Phillips talking about the Arizona Barbecue Festival, March 26th. Lots of money, 20 G's up for prize. And then, of course, Candy Weaver, just this past hour, talking about the Kansas City Barbecue Society, getting that little reintroduction going in the relationship reestablished with KCBS, and we can grow from here. Big show planned next week, as usual. And until next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is your program host and proud U.S. American Greg Rempe. Good night now.